Steve Strange. Well, kind of going back, you know, you mentioned the Sex Pistols, and I met Steve, we played with the Sex Pistols early in 1976 down in Bridge End in South Wales. So um, when he was a teenager, basically? Yeah, when he was a teenager, I um, was quite surprised that there was a bit of the burgeoning punk scene down there even before there was really one in London, so that was not shocking, but an eye-opener. And I got chatting to Steve, and he said, well, where are you playing next? And the next day we had a gig in uh, Burton-on-Trent in the Midlands. And anyway, we got up late and drove up there and got there for sound check. He was already waiting in the car park. park. He'd hitchhiked his way up there and he'd seen something different. And he was looking for a way out of the kind of the greyness of the, the valleys down there. There's something different yeah. about So he was him. a punk before he was a new romantic? Well, he was a punk. He was a guy who wanted to do something, as our crowd was. He was a bit younger than me and um, I made friends with him. And we kept in contact, and he actually came up to London, and I put him up in my flat, and he sort of kept on the floor. So you were friends, despite the fact that some say that the formation of Visage meant the end of your own band, which hits. Yeah, but I kind of rolled with that, you know, things I've built in shelf life. I had a band after the Sex Pistols called The Rich Kids, and two of the guys, um, Rusty Egan, the drummer, and Midjure, who were in the band, they teamed up with Steve and did a side project, which was Visage. And it, it took off. And, um, good, good what, what about the music for you? It's well, it's not as hard as, as punk. Your previous guy was talking on the on the screen there. He, he said as much the same himself. I like Steve. He was an instigator. There was an interesting crowd around him. People all went on to do some things. He provided a scene, and it's very kind of hard to do that. I don't think he was a fantastic singer or, or songwriter, were well, kind of good enough, but he had something a bit more, you know, you could go back to somebody like Alan Freed, who championed all the ro early rock and roll records and was the first person to start playing them in the States. Steve sort of had a role like that a little bit, he, he, he helped to popularise craft work, uh, the normal, uh, Grace Jones, that stuff. And of course the New Romantics as well, which well, is Well the so New Romantics came out of that, yeah. And, and, as again your, your other contributor said, was, the punk thing was very black and white um, and he brought some colour into people's lives. I mean you used the word instigator earlier on, one of the things that uh, the movement did was it brought in androgyny and, and it brought in gay people into the sort of front line of politics, you know, of, of rock music which was very different uh, from the sort of punk era, wasn't it? Yeah, but some of us, not <laughs> me, but some people in the punk movement rolled with that as well, you know, yeah. so... Um, but you didn't sort of celebrate it by dressing up and wearing no, makeup that, that, and all that. that's kind of true. But I think it was a natural extension of that. I think the music was slightly lightweight, but I think the scene it created was fun. So how would you summarise his legacy then? Well, I think it's a bit too early to summarise his legacy, but I think all around the world there's little people in little towns who live kind of grey lives, and he brought some colour to them, and I think he's good for that, 